All right, so on this episode of Design Time, I have probably one of the most brain-racking things I've tried to do, and I'll explain the issue, and then we'll talk about how we solved the problem, but it's not solved yet. The issue was this exhaust was built with slip joints. Slip joints, basically one pipe is larger than the other. You slide it over and you clamp it. Um, we've been running this exhaust for two years, and because of the forces involved with drifting and you know, you can see underneath here how much damage it's uh, gotten. Basically, it just could not hold up to the abuse. Plus, the bigger problem, in order to do a clutch, we had to take the slip joints off that are halfway up the exhaust because this is a tri-y exhaust, so it goes from four to two, and then from two to one. And it just was not working. The slip joints were kind of leaking and all sorts of little problems. So basically, going into this project, I had minimal confidence doing it, but I knew that once I started doing it, I would begin to see the, the greater picture. And I started with scanning the whole underside while the exhaust was assembled. The next thing I did was I took this huge sawzall blade and I started a cut like this because the sawzall blade is allowing me to keep a plane. Whereas if I used a zip cut, I wouldn't be able to do that. I also added tacks holding all these runners that were slip joints together. This was in here like that. So after I started the cut, I then took a blade from another Sawzall and I stuck it in the cut. And I'll show you this on the computer. And what that was able to give me was a cut plane. And the reason I need a cut plane is in the computer, I need a flat face to select a plane so that I can create eventually flanges. The idea was I was going to add flanges somewhere along the exhaust system. You can see how adding a flange to this is going to be real difficult. You can't just throw a two bolt on her and call it a day. This is going to have to be a very custom flange. Long story short, I'm going to show you the computer, but the result of the computer is very different and very specific exhaust flanges. And you'll see these differences in shapes and everything and that's all to compensate for the bend of the tube coming in uh, so essentially this one is going to sit like that and it's incredible how well it fits uh, obviously it's 3d scan and everything but like i just started doing this this morning and then this is going to come off of it um, and it's going to slide right in there so once essentially all I need to do now is re-weld the same tubes, but to these flanges. And I checked in the CAD and everything is accessible. We're gonna water jet cut some gaskets, either out of copper or aluminum, but I designed an interior gasket that's gonna go between these sandwich plates. It's brain racking because the order of operation and the process is like, you just don't know where to start. So I also did a secondary scan. After I cut these off, I scanned it all again. And that gave me all of the faces and the shapes of the tubes because these tubes are not cut across. It's not a perfect cross section. Some of them are cut on an angle. So this one is going to go in like this. And you can see how it misses parts of the block and gets different sections. And it's just, it's just wild. So I figured I would show you behind the scenes design time stuff. Maybe it's, this is interesting to you, maybe it's not, but this one uh, really messed with my mind. So I'll show you these on the computer and then uh, we'll get into some other things that we're tweaking up throughout the week. Okay, so remember I mentioned, I scanned the whole thing with that blade that I was telling you about. This is what that piece of material is right here. So this is the passenger side. That's essentially a Sawzall blade stuck inside of the, the slit that I cut. And then same thing here, you can actually see the end of it. That's another Sawzall blade. So basically I stuck that in there. That's what gave me the ability to create uh, construction planes. You can see this plane here on both sides. And that plane is what I was able to then draw flanges on and eventually make a mate flange. And then on this side, same thing. But what was cooler was after I did this first scan, I then did a second scan and you can see how that looks. So I'm able to see the fully cut tube as well. 
So the original one was meant for me to get the entire shape of the exhaust while it was still in its original position. Um, so it's kind of like a snapshot of where it needs to be so that when I make all these flanges like this, they're able to clear the bends of the tubing and clear the chassis. We're able to get a socket in there. And then if I have this in the way, I can see where this is gonna sit um, relative to everything else. It's just a pretty advanced project, honestly, almost because there's just nothing square, symmetrical, or you can't use any data off of this. And then on this one, I then designed these two gaskets that we're gonna be putting in. And I'm gonna just cut a bunch of these. I really hope that they're able to seal. We'll probably plane both flanges nice and square and flat. Um, and you can see I had to add a bunch of material because I'm not able to get a hole up here because of the block and everything else. So I just made this part of the flange much thicker in hopes that we would able to still be able to clamp that and seal it. So all of this is really trial and error. I'm definitely not an exhaust uh, flange expert by any means. So that's what I've been working on all day. We thought about it last week. It's weird going into this project. I was less than 50% confident that I would be able to, to come up with something and achieve this. Um, and Mike's gonna come in tomorrow. We're gonna have everything basically done. And uh, when he sees it, I'm sure he's just gonna be like, what the heck? How did you come up with this? But honestly, by necessity is how we came up with it. We're solving problems. We're, now we're gonna weld the slip joints that are in the middle. Um, and everything's gonna probably seal and become a lot stronger. And that's what we want. We, we do not wanna have to deal with this exhaust uh, issues any longer. So that's the design time beginning of this video. And we'll show you guys some other things right after this. The real question is, how are we going to keep this slip joint on the header? Got some ideas, spring tabs and stuff, obviously is what people are gonna be leaning towards, but we've done them and they stretch the spring and rip them off anyways. So, gotta come up with something else. I wonder if we have any titanium sheet metal left from our skid plates. gonna weigh more than anything we're gonna put it in. I think so. Oh yeah. This one to be quite a bit narrower, but it has to be the same thickness as this one. Very, very, very custom. So, in theory, the shape it should give me like a bit of a offset S. Oh, <laughs> ran out of limit on the machine. I was like, wait a second, <laughs> that should have worked. All right, please hold.
nice. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it worked. That's what I wanted. Let's see. Let's see if Mike approves. Also, I have no idea what the offset needs to be. A big guesstimator. <laughs> Dude. Oh, I needed more. A little bit more. No, we'll just, we'll just push it up. So I'll just round this. I'll just round this out and it'll be perfect. Beautiful. Like that? Just a little. Beautiful. Now we can do four or It looks two. like this back one will just be straight though. Yeah. It's actually almost it's needs, going up on it. It almost needs a reverse. You can go Uno both. reverso. It goes both ways. And then I knew it was slightly off center. Slightly. So I made it slightly off center. We got some play. Some play room. Yeah, I'll just round this out and then we're good. Yep. Uh, it turned out real well. Just how I intended it to be with the little gasket. I cut a bunch of those. I put a little bit of silicone on it just for insurance, but we welded these bolts. The idea is we actually riveted these slip joints and we're gonna clamp them as well. The idea is that we'll take these off as a unit. So this Y will essentially be one piece. Will it work? No idea. We're gonna find out the first time we need to do a clutch, but essentially that would be ideal. It may not because we welded these bolts and uh, that means that they have to align with holes and it depends. It depends on how flexible these are, uh, really. But I'm excited for the opportunity to test this out and it should, even if this isn't the case, it will actually still be better. So. Everything went well. As long as it doesn't leak, we're uh, winning.